All right, welcome back. We've been sent a case for it looks like congenitally missing lateral incisors, tooth number seven and ten. Um, unfortunately, this one was sent without any instructions or uh, evaluation notes, uh, so I'm just going to do a idealized plan here. Um, and again, we start with uh, in this situation is it analog or digital? And this is clearly a digital workflow, um, uh, so we can get the CERIC data in. And what we've got here is uh, full art CERIC data and both teeth designed. I'd like to take a few minutes and focus on the actual design of the uh, restorations and give some feedback on these. So one of the things that I'm looking for, especially when designing anterior teeth, is that I would like to see my designs for my restorations. Um, that's, you know, obviously a little bit exaggerated there, but I'd like to see my designs for my restorations in the right um, uh, plane and, and, and so forth. So here we can see that this lateral has been designed uh, tilted distally, whereas the other teeth have a slight mesial inclination to them. So I, I would like to see that improved. Additionally, the other area that uh, when I look at this, I can also see right here is that um, <clears throat> we've been designed as whereas this area here you can see how the canine comes up the central comes up here but this part of this tooth is a bit too bulky there uh, so again uh, these are little things that make the difference in terms of being able to have a good design and because we're doing prosthetically driven implant planning um, we would like to have that plan exactly right the other thing I would also take note of here is is your gingival margin looks pretty good right through there so that's good and you know if we take a look and do our gingival margins there we can see that's about the right spot there so from that perspective it looks good uh, the other thing that I did notice here as well is uh, the gingival margin on number seven so the lingual margin looks to be pretty accurate there but as we go around we can clearly see uh, that our <clears throat> lingual margin on tooth number 10 is uh, quite inaccurate. My guess would be uh, that that is probably uh, with that not in occlusion um, or that's going to be bulky and this could lead us to placing an implant too lingual uh, and having a bulky tooth there. Uh, it just doesn't ap accurately represent uh, what we're trying to achieve and same thing here as well on this angulation you can see that this part of the tooth is just not designed as ideally as we would like it to be and and I again I know uh, this is me being particular uh, but these are the things that make things go from good to not so good uh, just like so again and then also the gingival margin on this one should probably be more like that right there uh, instead of just right there so that you can see that's why we have that uh, inclination there so just do take a few more seconds and that's all we're talking about here uh, to properly design this and use your position rotate tools use your bio jaw tools if you're not familiar with those tools do to, uh, consider taking additional training on uh, your CEREC machine to be able to get that and the other thing you can also see is I doubt our incisal edge is going to be uh, crooked like this as well so um, again that's me being particular but with anterior cases that's the point of this technology is to be particular now our implant plan here has these implants coming out of the facial and we're slightly off center here and we're well out the, the distal here and well out the facial so we're slightly off center there and I think the reason for that is also going to be the bone uh, here so here we're using the technology for restoratively driven implantology but we're using the mindset of place the implant where bone is and quite frankly what I would probably concern and then let me back up here for a second in looking at this we simply don't have enough bone right here and right here to allow for this implant placement uh, so what I would probably uh, look to consider here uh, as well also is when we have very facially driven implant placements 
we have a tendency to get long teeth, we get recession, our abutments become harder, hiding the implant, uh, the grayness of the implant and having thin tissue becomes a little bit more challenging there. Uh, so with anteriors, especially on young people, and I'm assuming this is a young person since no information was given here, is I would probably choose to place my implant a bit more like this. And then your first set thought's going to be, well, then this requires grafting. And unfortunately, it does require grafting. And, and that's unfortunately uh, sometimes what we have to do to get the best results for our patients is to um, is to uh, learn and do things that sometimes that we're not comfortable with or to, in this particular case, consider doing pre-implant grafting. We're working with a uh, specialist, a periodontist or oral surgeon, uh, to do some... Um, uh, bone grafting there. Also, uh, the reason I would encourage bone grafting or if the bone was there, connective tissue grafting is is we can clearly see that there's a d uh, depression here on the buckle and given that this patient is probably in the 25 to 30 year ball, 35 year old ballpark, um, you know, we want to look at a very long term success for this particular case. So I would probably err towards something like that on tooth number seven and here you can see now we are a little bit more centered and uh, we're going to be able to have a nice and build a nice emergence profile here. So here we can see that now we have the room to develop the reverse sigmoid emergence profile whereas in the original plan we did not have that room at all. We had to go straight out or we had to actually make an abutment that went in and which is very difficult to do so uh, that that would be my suggestion on sub seven and site number ten very much the same thing here somewhere along this line here from a placement perspective and now <clears throat> we're going to give ourselves again room for emergence profile and everything and again this will require some grafting as well but uh, you know that's um, what's needed in this particular case and, and certainly we want to make sure uh, that we provide our patients with optimal uh, outcomes so uh, hopefully this is uh, of assistance and uh, thank you very much uh, for submitting your case.